all these parts have been soaking and evaporous for nearly a week now it has taken all the loose rust off and now I've got a, a tray with some petrol in it's petrol mixed with about 10% diesel and uh, one of our customers filled these diesel cork with petrol and it's just that the fuel will come out it's no use for anything really rather than washing parts off the evaporous actually taken the, the gloss paint off but left the primer on loosened all the old gaskets up quite nicely so it's that cleaned off quite well So while you're brushing there, there's a little bit of hard rust still left in there but most of it's coming off very nicely it's a piston valve, there was rust on there, all that's come off there's clean metal now no wear at all on any of this a little bit of pitting and corrosion on there but I'm sure it won't affect its performance That's a strainer for the solar lubricator tank. I have to make a lid for it, I haven't got the lid. It's one of the parts that was missing. as well it goes up the room to get the goods in tin for that copper tube. strain that goes in the bottom of the crankcase sent as the oil pump goes into the oil pump that was absolutely chopped solid we rust and shale it's nice and clean now this crankcase has had two coats of paint and there's still some bits I've missed It'll be only get a final coat once it's all assembled. And usually the paint scrapes off the gasket faces. and scrape that's actually an old file and somebody's brazed a carbide tip on the end of it or a tungsten tip on the end of it it's obviously had a lot of use not sure where it came from now but it does get used quite a lot I like using handmade tools 
Uh, it's a, well, it's a lot of history in there, the garlic made it and actually made a living using it. I didn't give them any for scraping, paint off, but now I mean, I'm not doing any harm. This is one of the last parts out, and it's only one of the first parts in. It's the actual oil strainer. It goes along the bottom of the crankcase and connects it with that port there, and that's where the oil is pulled into the oil pump. It's spring loaded, one end's blanked off and it's got gauze all the way through it. So basically it goes in there, spring loaded up against that union, like that. I'll bring the camera in so you can see it a little bit better. I, mean, I hope you can see it in the bottom of the crankcase there. That's the oil feed pipe, spring loaded, so it's always pushed up against that union and the oil gets drawn in through there. So that's the first part in. What I intend doing is get the oil pump assembled and bolted onto here before I put the crank in and just make sure that the oil pump is in fact working all right. Then it's a straightforward clean up, make new joints and reassemble. The worst part is the steam cylinder lubricator. Uh, the pump for that is in a real mess. My friend Bob's got that away. Um, if anybody can resurrect it, I'm sure Bob can. This is the front main bearing and front casing of the little steam engine. That's the oil pump assembly, goes in there, and that's where the shaft with the gear went. I soaked this in the vapor rust for probably a week and slowly cooks it apart. And I've cleaned the parts up, it's just about ready. Once a little bit more wire brushwork in there. What I need to do is make a joint that goes between that face and that face. If it was a car, it'd be called a gasket. It's not a car, it's a steam engine, so it's called a joint. I've got some jointing material, and it actually says it's made in England, believe it or not. I still need to cut a piece that we can get the gasket out of. Sorry, it's not a gasket, it's a joint. Well, the first thing I want to do is put this hole in, then I'm going to transfer this piece onto there and get the rest of the joint out of that. I hope I've made the bastard big enough. Right, I've had a massive roll of gasket paper or jointing paper. I've actually managed to cut the bit too small, believe it or not. Much better. Right. That bit will get used for something else, it'll not be wasted. Right, to cut the gasket, you can with a, a simply dirty finger end, rub around there like that, and it'll leave a mark, and you can cut that with a pair of scissors. The easiest way to do it is to use a ball cane hammer and just gently go around the edge and use the casting to actually cut the, the gasket material because we've got a nice square edge there. Take your time all the way around, keeping the paper as tight as possible. Just about there. Right, so we've got a perfect hole, the right size. This then gets transferred onto this part because I want those size holes for the studs to go through. That goes onto there like that. Then we'll simply go around the outside, cut the gasket to shape. Like I say, you could rub it like that and you could use scissors so you get a nice dirty line. But honestly, using a little ball pin hammer does the job very easily and very quickly.
I spent years when I was younger making gaskets for car engines, water pump gaskets in the lake. Right. There's always the last little bit that hangs on, like a. Uh, it just hangs on. Okay. So that didn't take long at all to make a joint to fit there. Next thing is we need to put in the stud holes. You can see where the stud holes are. I've got the old gasket and the old joint. We can see exactly where the, the stud holes are on that one. Now what I've done is I've soldered a ball bearing on the end of an old bolt so we can use that to mark the stud holes, like the cut the stud holes, you could just use the ball end of a hammer, ball pin hammer, but this makes it a, a neater job. Right, so that's really neat, really tidy. What you can do is, once you get a hole like that, get a bolt that's a good fit in there, and that's going to stop the gasket or even the joint from moving. Right, work our way around, have a look, there's one there. So I'm happy that the, the joint's in the right place. It can't be anywhere else really because it's a good fit on that register there. Really neat, really tidy. There's a special one here, the shape of the oil port, like an oval. It's quite important we'll get this one right. Take your time and it makes a nice job of it. One there. You can feel the feel the ball drop into the hole. And obviously you've got to make sure you get the, the bits of joint material out of any holes. Another one there. One there. Right, and that's basically all the holes in there. I think. Have a look. Yeah, it goes that way around. Yep. Right, so that's it. One freshly made joint. And all we do is put some little pieces of Gasket paper out of the holes. That one there is an important one because that's an oil, little oil feed. We'll have to get that one out of the airline. And so the gasket fits on there nicely. When this is assembled, finally, I'm just going to put grease on the gasket. There's various compounds people put on, but well, honestly on a gasket like this with a nice machine face just ordinary bearing grease will be perfectly all right. I've got new studs to make for here, those studs aren't very good. I've got that one there to do which is actually metric. The part of the oil pump that I got cleaned up, that's the, the plunger or the piston that goes into there, like that. And there's a little valve block for the bottom. And we had the gear and the shaft, which was in real bad condition. We just polished up in the lathe, and the evaporator took all the rust off there. It's left a little bit of pitting. There's some pitting on that cam shaft there on the on the cam lobe. I could weld that up and regrind it, but honestly. All that's going to do is hold a little bit more oil. I've seen stuff way worse than that running and it's not like it's going to be in constant use. Right, so there's a little 
woodruff key there that goes in, so that goes into there and goes through the woodruff key like that and this end drives the oil pump for the steam cylinder and that cam lobe there drives that oil pump there what I'd like to do because I've got a hole through here I may drill that shaft and put a stud in then I can run that with a drill and just make sure that this oil pump is functioning properly, I'm sure it will a bit closer shot of it working there see how it's pushing the pump up and down quite merrily this was bad you see in here this pin and the pump in there I had to put heat on to get it away you can see all the casing here has been eaten away with the rust but the top half is still good This plate supports the cylinder oil pump that goes onto there with the gasket. I managed to get some new BSF countersunk screws. That's what's left of an oil seal in there, that'll have to come out. Uh, the old leather oil seal. And you can see how badly pitted this is. And the evaporus has taken all of the, the rust out of it completely. But that oil seal in there is just, it's not, it's got no grip left on the shaft, it's doing nothing. So we need to dig it out of there, measure up, get an oil seal file, modern, modern oil seal will go in there. That's actually the other one. See how this is offset? That's what drives the oil pump, as a little ratchet goes onto there, a little pole goes onto there, which drives the ratchet inside the pump. So I can get that seal out of there now, and then have a measure up and see if I can find the one on the internet yeah, that's absolutely bone hard in there now Let's take a little bit more persuasion than that to get it out Right, it's the bastard giving you. Right, that's it there. So we just want to rub our oil seal to fit in that hole, I'll clean that up and be a reasonably fit on the shaft. I'm going to always take a skim out of there if I get a, a slightly bigger oil seal, it doesn't really make any difference. The depth there is quite important. So obviously you've got to keep the, the engine oil out of the steam oil. Yeah, we've got to measure this now so I can find an oil seal for it. So I can bore that outside if I need to, because it will be an imperial size. I'm just going to make a gasket for here out of this. With the paper we've got left, we'll just get it. See, so wasting a piece of paper. This comes in various thicknesses. I think this stuff's 0.4 of a mil, which is, is near the, the originals I could find. And then got four little bullet holes. One.
Looks a really neat job as you've got a nice sharp edge to work at. And that can be trimmed to the size of the original one if I can find it. Right, so that's the original original gasket there. So I can just draw around that and cut it with a pair of scissors. I need a serious tidy up in here. That's that one for there. I'm going to make the one for the underside. that we made a mess of earlier I'm getting just the right amount of crap on my hands and out of more gasket paper not too dirty that you sandwich with but too dirty to use a tea towel on <laughs> yeah dear me John see what I mean about marking the lane and then it could quite easily go down there with the scissors if you wanted to. Yeah, they don't like this. Making joints. Yeah, the difference for sitting something solid. Right, so that's another gasket done. I'm just going to run a tap through these four holes just to clean the, those threads out properly. work to do here making some studs for the housing on the little Stuart Turner engine I'm trying to do as many operations as I can in one couple so to speak so I'm using this tool to face it as well as put a slight lead on for the die to start on to put some threads on it I cut this length with a hacksaw because it's silver steel and I once made the mistake of using a little angle drain that chopping disc, slitting disc and of course they went hot and once they grew hot silver steel was hard I'm using silver steel because it's the only material I could buy in quarter inch locally of course it is a really good grade of steel six of these to do all quarter BSF but one needs to have a six mil thread on the end put a mark on where I need the thread to go to on each one 
You know what I've got is a die note, I haven't got a, an ordinary split die. But it is a really good quality one. To do the most tape like that, I'm using just to make sure it starts nice and square. A little bit of lubricant. And what we do, start it by hand so it's nice and true. Thread, which is a really good fit on a, a brand new quarter nut. these in with a couple of check nuts on them. I'm also going to put a little bit of thread sealer on the end of the threads. It won't do any harm at all. I got a nice little ear thread well spanner given last week which is perfect for this and I also bought some new BSF studs, a BSF nut, I was able to get them from a nut and bolt supplier I use. That one there is the only one that's in a blind hole and it's actually slightly too long I'll have to take a little bit of thread off that. It's a good start. a little bit of thread to come off there and that'll be fine. We're going to carry on, put them all in like that, and then try the case on and make sure they're all the right length. They should be because they're all the same length. Well, you never know. It. You could just use a pair of mill grips on the stud, I suppose, and tighten it in that way, but it 
which is the way I was showing how to do it, so it's the way I'm going to do it. Especially when people are watching this. That's all six studs in and tight. That metric one did go in and tighten up. Nice. Nothing the matter with that. So now I can assemble this with some dummy nuts. Put some spacers on, tighten it down. Put the shaft in. I need to try and drill the end of that and put a, a drive into it. Then we can get this pump running. I'll have to blank the drain holes off so I can put them out in the crankcase but I want to see the pump run before I put any more together the little ratchet pump that Bob repaired I need to get that running also 